Good afternoon from the Go Local Live Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center here in Providence. I am Rick Simone and it is Wednesday so it is time for the taste. Uh, I have to say as I, I get into the segment is that I was overloaded with instant messages and now probably six or seven text messages in the last few minutes from people. I am going to get to as many questions as I can. We've got some tremendous, tremendous guests and I know people get excited about new happenings that are going on. So today we have new happenings on the dining scene and I've got four great guests from different parts of the state coming in to highlight what they have going on. Um, the first guest we have coming in is Derek Emery who is the Director of Operations for Fuel Restaurant and Sports Bar. He'll be joining me in just a minute. And Derek has a, a great thing going on over there that he's got some carding going on, a new restaurant. So he'll be the first guest in just a second. I also have my friend Benjamin Lloyd coming in, Chef Ben, who is with the Salted Slate. He's been with us before. He's got a great restaurant over there in Wayland Square on the east side. And he's opening up Mercer's Delicatessen. So I know a lot of you hit me up with questions on that. A lot, a lot of questions. So Ben, we'll get to all of those. Um, then I have my friend Bajat coming in, and Bajat is with the Howley Bread Group with Panera. And we've had Christine in before from Panera talking about things they are going on, but he's got a new delivery service that's different than what we've been seeing out there. So I'm excited to, to get his take and hear about the new things happening at Panera as well. And then the last guest joining us is going to be Chef Andy Pyle from Zaco Taco. Um, I know a lot of you have asked about, you know, Cinco de Mayo coming up. I'm already going to hit upon it, I promise. And uh, Zaco Taco has been open, I want to say, somewhere between a month and a two now, and it's getting rave reviews. So I know that we'll get a lot of great information to him about his menu and how they transform the location that used to be Rick's Roadhouse over there. So to get things rolling, and I got, like I said, get everybody in, I'd like to welcome in Derek from Fuel Restaurant Sports Bar. How are you, sir? Hi, very good. How are you today? Good. Thanks for making it in. I appreciate it. And I know we've got, look, here we go. Come on in, chef. Let's see. Look at this. Not going to be complaining about this, and the guys in the <laughs> back won't either. Thank you, chef. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. So I live in Lincoln and everybody hears me talk about this all the time and I don't have enough great places to be able to go yet. And I use the word yet because I hope people are going to keep expanding into the Lincoln Smithfield area. But you guys have already had something there and now you've added to it, right? My subject slide yep. over a little bit. Yep. Uh, so, so we've had we've had carding available for a year. Uh, and just this past February, we opened up Fuel Restaurant, which is the foodie side of, uh, of our business. Um, and as you can see here, we've brought some samples of what we do upstairs from the carting. Uh, so it's been a fantastic enhancement to our business. And it's also brought in some really great events and some really good opportunities for people to kind of come in and do some team building and explore some really great food and then, uh, I guess a unique atmosphere, if that's what you want to call it. So, and I think unique is a good word because I do think that kind of sums it up and describes it a little bit. The space though, so this space is unique in the way that it's it's attached to it, but it's not, so it's separate. It's not part of the carding technically, but you're looking down on it? Correct, it's on okay. the mezzanine level. Okay. So it's right above the carding and actually it's all lined with windows. So you can see down. Bit. I'm gonna make sure you stay in the front. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, okay. I don't whack the burger That's there. That's right. Um, but it's, uh, it's lined with windows so you can see the carding down low. So you can cheer on your family, your friends, your, your coworkers, your teammates. So was this always an original idea that the restaurant was going to come in on top of the carding? Yes. Okay. So from day one, we planned on bringing it in and then just took a little time to get it just right. So one of the biggest questions that's been out there is about the style of food. And I do want to get to it because you've got these dishes that are making me drool over here in a second. But before we do that, I kind of want to have you paint a verbal visual of the setup because I, I know what the carding looks like and I've had friends and my kids have gone there and such and I know colleagues here have been but can you paint a visual of how the restaurant is set up? Absolutely okay. you know it's it, it, it's really a breathtaking scene when you walk in because we've taken a big space and we've just built it out with some beautiful amenities we've got some industrial brick going on some uh, old uh, factory lamps hanging from the ceiling uh, we've got hardwood floors, we've got some really unique uh, black and white tile. We're working currently on a rain of lights, which is going to be hanging over the bar. Nice. Uh, we've really just gone full hilt. We've got some corrugated aluminum that's got some antiquity to it, some rust, some uh, really great industrial chic looks that really bring it all together and make it just such a fantastic build out. So was the design, is the, was the design done locally or is this something that you guys have thought out? It wasn't. Out? One, of our, uh, one, of our, one of our ownership partners is actually from Holland and uh, has a design team out there that has been designing restaurants. His name's Hans, he's a fantastic designer. Uh, he's been designing restaurants for, God, years. And he just really tied in a lot of the 
uh, urban sort of appeal into what we've put together over at R1. So I've got to go over, because I want to see this because it is close to me, but the pictures alone that you post up on the site, and that was some of the feedback, because everybody's saying it looks amazing, it looks beautiful to have it. Oh, a huge bar, too. Huge, lots yeah, of TVs. Massive, yeah, massive, yeah. So you got the TV spread out, you got the bar. The rest of the setup, so are the billiards and the, the bowling as part of that space as well? It is, okay. and, and in talking about the space, we do have a VIP room that has uh, enough capacity to hold about 200 people. Uh, the entire facility can hold about 450 people. So we have the bowling, we have the billiards, we have four... Uh, four bowling lanes, two billiards tables, uh, which are uh, an amenity to the, to the entire facility. Um, but in particular, we've rented out those rooms. The VIP room has its own personal bar. Nice. Uh, we've got a projector. We can do, uh, like I said, team building events. We can do corporate, um, oh my gosh, what's it, PowerPoint presentations, or if there's you know, a sales team that wants to come in and display a new product. Okay. Um, it's all self-enclosed and private, so that way it's, you know, so that, and Jen, I'm going to call you up because that was the question. Can they do family events and corporate events? And the answer looks to be yes. that it's yes, that they're able yes. to do both. Because yes. that, is, that is a hard thing to marry. It's a hard thing to marry to make it sure is. that the room is functional enough to be able to house. If you've got a bunch of kids coming in, they're going to be out bowling and carding, and then a, a group that's coming in that's corporate that wants to do team building. So it, it is a challenging thing. So you've met that mix to be able to do that. So Jen, you mm -hmm. just got your question answered. All right, so now we got the atmosphere covered. we got to get to the food because your food is also not, in thinking about the environment, what you would expect. No, I think uh, I think historically people will think it's more of cafeteria style food, uh, and it's the furthest thing from um, one of our other partners and uh, and our chef Zach have really exhausted ourselves trying to find out some fan or, or discover some fantastic ingredients to really take pub food and elevate it to another level. Um, you know, we have our, our yeah, mushroom fig got. pizza here. Uh, we've taken uh, crimini, um, shiitake, and button mushrooms. Uh, triple mushroom blend. We, we've added it with uh, Krugnali's dough out of Krugnali Bakery. Nice. Um, sourcing locally. Yeah, sourcing locally. Uh, we've got some arugula, some uh, balsamic glaze to adorn it. It's really a unique flavor, very unique dish. Uh, this, this is me sitting at the bar. <laughs> mushroom pizza all day long. We, we have your standard fare too. We've got cheese, pepperoni, and, and what you would, I guess, expect, but we really try to do it in artisanal um, in, in our Forza Forney oven, which is just a fantastic piece of kitchen equipment. And, and, and not to interrupt, but I think that that's what's important, and that's what I want to highlight is the fact that you did take this concept, and on your website you describe it as a foodie style mm -hmm. thing, but mm -hmm. the pub style is great, and you can get that in a lot of places to go, but to take that elevation, and for us that work in the city or come into the city and used to dining here, to be able to come back home to the suburbs and have that style at home mm -hmm. is a wonderful thing. So thank you for that. Yeah, and, that and that's <laughs> what we tried to do is really deliver, you know, I, I think today's consumer and, and has really uh, educated themselves on what quality ingredients right. are and what uh, what makes a really good dish and what makes it just, you know, run of the mill. So No, I agree. So what else do we got here? So we have here our El Jefe burger. El uh, Jefe. And, uh, El Jefe burger. Um, we've taken Schweiden Sun Beef, uh, which is a, a farm out of New Jersey, and we've done, uh, which if you've ever had it, is absolutely amazing, mouth-watering, um, delicious, delicious beef. Um, oh, and it's, it's all Angus, amazing. Uh, we've melted pepper jack cheese on there. Uh, we've also got some uh, tomato corn salsa, arugula, a chipotle mayo, and we do it on a fresh brioche bun. Uh, and then, of course, we accompany that with the familiar French fry. I am loving that, which I had some before you came on. I was hungry. <laughs> all right, what else we got here? And then we have our nachos, which is one of our most popular appetizers that we sell. Um, really, we've just taken fresh ingredients. Uh, nothing comes out of a can. Nothing comes out of... Uh, we fry our own chips, we you know, cut our own lettuce, make our own salsa. Um, it just, it, it, really they're amazing nachos if you've ever had them. So I like, I mean, even considering where you got the beef from, I like the fact that you're sourcing from these people that you know that you've got a good reputation, local and a little bit beyond there. Every place that has opened up in the suburbs seems like they've had this growth expansion. People get to know them, they get to go. You opened up the carding first, now you've got this complementing it. My next question when it goes to a join with the menu, how's your beverage program? Oh, because okay. <laughs> hands down, uh, you know, having having had a lot to do with the uh, with the development of the beverage program, um, we've really tried to appeal to, again, keeping in mind that we wanted to have corporate events and uh, appeal to a lot of tastes, families, right. etc. Uh, we've got a great craft beer selection. We've also got uh, a great bourbon selection. 
Um, really, there isn't a cocktail I don't think we can make. Um, we Perfect. carry a bottle of Dom Perignon if you're interested in having that kind of event. Nice. Um, and we also have, uh, you know, we, we, we carry some familiars, Miller Lite, Bud Light, uh, all the staples of what you would expect to find. But I'll have uh, no problem getting a glass of wine while I'm dealing with my kids. No, I mean, we've got a Perfect. great wine selection, um, you know, from Cabernets, um, Pinot Grigios, Merlots. Uh, we've really touched on some popular um brands that are very familiar and again you know it was, was all tying in with our food we wanted everything to be familiar and approachable yet premium and delicious now you're doing both lunch and dinner right we are open uh, actually lunch we do on friday saturday and sunday okay um during the week we open at three o'clock our, our kitchen actually opens at four um during the week so we're, we're more towards dinner during the week and uh and on the weekends, we're open, yeah, like I said, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So now, this is, I mean, you're very new. You're less than, what, the two-month mark at this at this point, mm -hmm. right? What's been the reception from people coming into the area and stuff? It's been great. Uh, I mean, people have been you know, thrilled to have us in the community, thrilled that we are close by. Um, I know there are some other karting facilities that are a travel of way, or a little bit of a way, uh, ways away, but, you know, we've really been successful and, and having people come in and give us great feedback and, and excited to be able to go karting, come upstairs, you know, maybe they've had a kid's party or, 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 you know, been able to watch their kids, as I said earlier, on, you know, go around and race on the tracks and just the excitement and the thrills and the smiles, even from the restaurant. And with the rest of the amenities, so the bowling and the billiards that you have in there, are guests doing that at the same time they're eating? Is it kind of they're hanging out afterwards or before? How's uh, the flow of it going? It's so amazing to watch. I mean, on, you know, Saturday is a super busy day for us right. and we are absolutely packed to the gills we've got people that are waiting to race we've got people that are waiting to bowl people that are playing pool um, the bar is just a energetic super great place to be um, we you know we air lots of sports events we have lots of large screen tvs and we're still adding more on um, and even in the vip room as i said we got a big projector so when we have you know big games like the great game, the Super Bowl every February. Um, so I'm being asked to ask you, <laughs> based on what you're saying, does he take reservations? <laughs> so I'm we assuming. do. We actually, okay. we, you know, again, as we've been uh, uh, growing and, and developing the business, um, we've added in uh, phone lines upstairs. So uh, we just worked um, with, with our phone partner to try to make it easier for people to navigate if you're calling about the track or if you're calling about the restaurant or if you're calling to book a party. Um, because we have had lots of inquiries right. as well. Uh, and I think that, those. and to, to your credit, I mean, I think building the event space was brilliant because it's needed, especially in that area. And I think that being that you're so new, that you're opening up a lot of opportunities for people that didn't know that there was a space to go to. So I think this is a big opportunity for people in the that Lincoln, Smithfield, mm -hmm. you know, Cumberland area to be able to reach out because you've got all these things coming up, graduation parties, birthday parties, anniversaries yes. to be able to do it. And on top of the corporate as well. Mm -hmm. And corporate's more, you know, short term for it. But spaces are needed throughout the state from the event side of things. And, you know, I'm going to be talking to my next guests about catering and deliveries and all that kind of stuff because it is, we are a big foodie state. Mm -hmm. And people love the fact to be able to celebrate and have great Items. So I'm really happy that you guys did the event space. I think that's a, a big credit to you over there. And in any new business, when you're opening up, you're learning and growing still as you're going forward. You're just saying about Every adding. Day. Yeah, you've got things you said you're more adding yep. more TVs, lights over the bar. So yep. it's a process to go through. Yes, it is. Tell me about a couple of the other items that you got on the menu, just as some examples out there for me. Well, we also, uh, you know, even taking our, our dessert platform, uh, you know, we partnered with Duck and Bunny, which is another local awesome. Providence Dan, business. Dan, we love those guys. Yep. Yeah, they've, they've been doing a lot of great work for us as well. Um, so we've incorporated their uh, fantastic dishes into our menu. Um, my goodness, I, I don't even know where to begin. We've, you know, Chef has really put together some great salads. Um, so for those that are not, maybe not, as carnivorous um, <laughs> as, as the rest of us. Um, but the so, diversity is there. Yeah, the diversity is there. We've got rotisserie chicken. Um, we've actually partnered a couple times with um, Buffoni Farms out of Johnston as well. Awesome. Um, to bring in some local, again, some, some more local products to our, to our menu. Well, congratulations again. Thank you for making the time to come in today. Make My sure pleasure. you check them Thank out. You. You'll be able to see more about this afterwards, and we'll put up some of the great pictures of the food. I promise it'll be before I eat the pizza. So <laughs> thank you for coming and joining today. I really appreciate much. it, Derek. And thank you to the chef as right. well. Um, thank you. Taylor, help you slide out with some of these. Okay. Take these out for you. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor. All right. Yes, I will be eating that pizza for sure afterwards. Don't worry about it. So my next guest, and is someone that I brought in a while back, I think when the taste had first started, um, a friend of mine who is a tremendous, tremendous chef, very fond of his Salted Slate restaurant up on Wayland Square on the east side. And I'm going to bring in Benjamin Lloyd to get us going, talking about his latest venture. Uh, let me see here. Oh, and he comes with wine. Now I know he's in good shape. Now I know. <laughs> Not if they're smart. 
Awesome. Thank you, Taylor. More, we got more? All right. I figured, Look at this. This is awesome. Stretch myself out. Stretch yourself out. <laughs> I'm going to get some glasses here. Awesome. How are you, my friend? Good. good You're making it through? You're okay? I'm trying. So he has an incredibly successful restaurant with Salted Sweet. But I, like I said, I also love and Josh and Kate are big, big fans who you see all the time over there from Go Local here. No, nope. look at this. Oh, mac and cheese. I am loving life here. <laughs> loving. This is awesome. Yeah. So first of all, my biggest question for you is, Salted Slate is going phenomenal. You have a, a great menu, a great product that you're putting out over there. You've built up this wonderful, wonderful clientele that you've got going there. Where did Mercer's come from? How did this idea come about? Mercer's uh, came from a want to, um, I think everyone loves, everyone loves a good delicatessen, uh, right? And um, I kind of grew up eating uh, at Chicken Ruth's in Annapolis. I'm not from Annapolis. Uh, grew up in Pennsylvania. And when we would drive through to DC, we'd go to Make Chicken Roots yeah. in, in Annapolis. Yep. Um, my business partner is from Manhattan, so his favorite there lunch place was Carnegie. Um, and about a year, a year and a half ago, okay. I thought, um, I thought, heck, this would be a really cool thing cool. to do. And, and our, you know, our thing is that uh, my my biggest thing is is utilizing our our local farmers, keeping my money in our economy as much as I can. Absolutely. Um, so then, you know, the point is, how do you how do you do that? How do you get that onto a plate um, in this setting? So, I mean, not that I doubt this is going to have any lack of popularity, especially location. Your location is literally right down the street from. Um, I can get from back door to back door in under a minute at a full sprint. <laughs> a typical <laughs> shot. You <laughs> measured the time. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that is the full sprint. Yeah. I love it. So. Meaning that you have that there, and you said you're going to be able to carry over some products sourcing locally, but also products and things that you've started in Salted Slate that can, can transform right. over Right, so part, part of this project will be um, a retail, and we're, kind of, we're going to kind of grow this over the next year, uh, utilizing Hope and Maine. Rick, if you are watching this, I am sorry I haven't gotten back to you. Uh, <laughs> I went down uh, two months ago and signed up with them, and then I kind of fell off the radar. Um, so over He's the, good. He just <laughs> made it public. You're all set. That's like a verbal contract right there. So, so over the... Over the next eight months, we're going to get our mustards into into jars. We're going to get our you know sauces into jars. But um, starting off, we'll we have a case. I have a 60-inch sushi case that will be um, selling retail. Uh, steak cuts from our uh, blackbird beef animals. We'll okay. be selling uh, pork cuts from our Pat's pastured pigs. Um, we will be selling our meatballs that uh, raw that people can take away and cook home. We'll be selling our breakfast sausage, our bacon, um, our locks that we cure in house. Oh my house. god, this is going to be amazing. Uh, so yeah. locks, that's a good point before we get to all this amazing food that's making me drool over here. You're not going to be a kosher deli. We are not kosher. I am not Jewish. <laughs> I just want to get that out of the way. I, I, am, I am neither trying to appropriate a culture nor am I trying to appropriate a, a religion. Um, I. It, this is about the food. This is about making good food that I think we all, it, it makes us uh, comfortable. It makes us think of um, kind of of home, yeah. in a sense. I don't want to sound cheesy or no, corny, it, but, it, I, but, but I think this, this food is, this is American food, um, you know, created here by, you know, people from Eastern Europe. Yeah. Um, this, the, the delicatessen, while it is a, a New York foundation right. this is hundreds of years in the making absolutely um you know thousands of years in the making and and i think that um i think that it resonates with all of us in some way no i i couldn't agree more and i think the comfort factor of knowing that people have this in that neighborhood i have to say the location where you're putting it in wayland is a perfect fit it kind of pays homage to the, the delicatessen as well and the sure. style of being able to walk around and move and the neighborhood feel over there definitely yeah and you know additionally and i want to you mentioned blackburn already i want to give a shout out to these guys because they've done such an incredible job of doing outreach and i know david dedakian does a lot of work with them as yeah. well to to get them out there but the fact that you're carrying that on and giving them another outlet to be out there it, it's just great for the state overall i think it's a great product i wouldn't yeah. you know one of the things I always tell people about uh, about Pat's pork is I can I can serve cuts from there as a center of the plate item that you would never serve. You would you would have to braise it, you would have to pull right. it, you would have to do. But these people are, you know, they're raising animals in you know in, in a tough environment here, but yeah. they're, but they're doing it really well, and and that translates into the final product. I agree, and they're right down from my house, so I'd yeah. love to see it. We're always stopping over there. All right, so you brought some amazing things, talking about comfort food, and you mentioned the the 
the baked goods are going to come from baked goods are coming. Luis at at Whalen Bakery. We've been he has he has nailed. I'm really proud of this. That's awesome. Um, he has Always nailed. Talking, I'm going to pour. A, a, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Took Go. me long enough. Um, <laughs> he's nailed a, a rye and a pumpernickel that are worthy of any deli um, in any city. That includes New York. Um, he's doing a great Kaiser roll for us. Uh, he's doing our bagels. Um, it took. I think it took us three weeks of really? R and D with him trying. He tried tons of different flours, tons of to to get this where it needed to be. He was he was awesome. He so was, he was a great partner. In this. Yeah, he was completely dogged in his. That's absolutely awesome. That. Thank you, sir. Well, cheers to you. And congratulations. Thank friend. you. This mm. is Trienne. This is a provincial um, rosé. It's um, mostly Cinso. It's beautiful. Lots of bright fruit, great weather, goes great with this stuff, smoked meats, things like that. Um, you know, easier on the palate. It allows this stuff to, to stand through. And he's got a great list in Salted Slate. So now, as we get to the rest of the food here, will you eventually or will it start out with having some alcohol at the Delicatessen? We're going to work into that. You're going to work I into it. I literally have not had time <laughs> I can to imagine. go down to I can um, imagine. the department uh, and and. But that'll get be something you see rolling. happening in the future. Yeah, I see it. I see a simple list. I see a couple of beers, uh, a couple of bottles of wine. Um, one of my good friends at the at the restaurant is um, was almost angry. <laughs> um, you know, he's in every Tuesday night, um, and he was the impetus for that. And the more I talk to adults, everyone thought, well, you know, everyone said, well, why wouldn't you have some kind of alcohol? And I guess I would. I have to agree. Uh, All right, so we started here. So let's go a little so more. So this is a pastrami. So this is a seven-day cure. We use, I'm using a lot of cuts from the chuck um, on my cows. Um, we use a little more than the brisket. We get up into the short rib area. We go all the way back to the navel um, and then up into the brisket wow. and then all the way up um, just before where um, the shoulder blade is in the Man, That is a full sandwich. Look at so that. we're doing 10 ounces. 10 ounces? 10 ounces of meat. Um, I don't, You're not gonna I, be hungry after that lunch. I don't want it to be obnoxious, Yeah. but I also, I, I'm highly value conscious. Um, and, I, and I think that that if someone's, you know, if someone's going to buy a sandwich for lunch, I don't necessarily, you don't need to have dinner and lunch the next day from it. No, but, but that's, you know. you're going to walk out of there feeling good about yeah, it. Totally. <laughs> All right, what do we got over here? So that's our curry chicken salad. We are going to be buying, we, we'll have a roasted chicken sandwich on. Um, so we'll be roasting chickens um, in the morning. Whatever we don't use will get turned into chicken salad <laughs> for the next day. So that's curry chicken salad, pecans, golden raisins, um, yeah, arugula, tomato on the Kaiser roll from, from uh, Luisa at Whalen Bakery. Now, why do these pickles and these chips look so amazing? So these are, these are uh, pickled green tomatoes, um, and then we do a half sour pickle, and we do a kosher dill pickle. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. What do we got chips, here? Actually, chips, we do three chips. kinds. We're doing a ranch. So we make the ranch This one's ranch. powder. That is ranch. And then we do a salt and vinegar, and then we'll just have a salt and pepper chip. Yeah, nobody eat the chips. They're mine. I'm calling the chips. <laughs> Okay, what else we got up here? Uh, latkes. So latkes with a creme fraiche, not sour cream, creme, uh, with a creme fraiche, and then um, we make our applesauce, obviously. Why not make it hard? <laughs> right. Oh my God, I know. Uh, rugula. Uh, traditional um, pastry. Um, we're doing fig and pine nut in the center. Oh. Um, my dough is a sour cream dough. Fig and pine nut? Yeah, fig oh and pine God, nut. Oh my God, I'm a fan of anything fig. That's fantastic. Yeah. This... Um, this is served in the delicatessens in New York. It's uh, it's called health salad. Hmm. Um, it's cabbage. It's uh, I put red bell peppers. I put carrot in. They vary from place to place. Um, tiny bit of vinegar, some salt, a um, little bit of oil, a little bit of sugar. That's it. It's so, almost like a wilted cabbage. Okay. It's not sauerkraut. But, but so does the cabbage got much flavor to it? It does. Really. Yeah. So I got that's something I got to try then because I got to tell you this is going to the healthier side of things and I've seen people in New York not so much with the red pepper and I like that you got the red pepper in yeah. there but I've seen this in New York and people it's like their quick lunch. You pretty much get when you sit down at a deli yeah. when you order you get some pickles and you get some of this hmm. everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere you go, uh, it's just it's comped. I uh, we're not comping it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a side. <laughs> that sounds like. Uh, this is our cream slaw, so a little more traditional. We're doing some wasabi and some radish sprouts in there, so it gives it a little bit of a difference. Um, and then uh, our mac and cheese. Um, I am a Fontina-based 
guy, uh, and then Adam Buffoni, the son of yeah. um, Mr. and Mrs., uh, is making our pasta for us. Really? Uh, from Pastiao. Yeah, he is. Uh, he invested in a, a really nice extruder. Oh, so you know, I think I saw our... this on social media. Pastiao was helping you with that. I think yeah. I saw that. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah and we feature. I think I, this is one of the pictures that we put up because you've gotten some great photographs already. The things that you're putting out there, which I think is perfect for visual people like myself. Then you get some greens. Big salad. So. Five big salads, 11 sandwiches, um, a bunch of sides, uh, and a couple of quick desserts like the arugula brownies, a couple of different cookies, um, you know. So, so give us, I know you're still working, but what are we thinking is going to be do the see, Why do you see the paint? I, I know, I saw, you see the, you paint the paint on, paint on his arms right here. Look at this, <laughs> the paint all over. I, so, was, I was painting this morning. <laughs> uh, we are shooting for next week. So next week. Yeah. So I'm going to bug him. So when the date actually happens, you'll see me put a big out announcement on my social media that you know. But so probably towards the end of next week, you think? Towards the end of next week. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So give us kind of a visual of what the setup is. I know you said it's you know the minute away from where you are in Salt yep. and Slate, but give us a visual of the setup that you're completing. So we are the location is 485 Angel Street. We are between CVS and Strands. Um, when you walk in, um, we have a window bar to the right for seating. Um, and then our seating goes along the right-hand wall. There's a, there's a really beautiful brick facade on there. Uh, and then you are kind of aimed at the counter. Um, we, have, uh, we have menu boards that are going to go up on the wall. Okay. So it's, it's essentially going to be like walking into a sandwich shop where you would walk to the counter. Perfect. You would give your order. Um, we'll make the stuff and you kind of work your way down. Um, the, the menus are done in progression. Um, as you know, sweets are at the end, sides right. are at the end. Um, when directly to our left, we're, we do have that case for retail sale, and we're and we're doing our retail sales. We we built um, a shelf unit um, to sell some stuff on. Um, and you said that's going to get phased into kind of. That'll your, get phased into right now. We'll be doing coffee um, coffee by the pound by the twelve ounce bag. Our roaster is out of Upton, okay. Massachusetts. Blue Fire Coffee Roasters. We that's what I use at the slate. Um, it's amazing coffee. He, so coffees, cappuccinos, that kind of thing will be. Not going to no no cappuccinos. I'm not going to compete. I've got two okay. other places right, um, that. right near me. So I will have drip coffee okay. because when I take the kids for lunch, I get drip. You're coffee. doing that. Yeah, yep. I, I need you. it in the afternoon. So what will the hours be once you get open? We're going to do a. 11 to 7. Uh, we're going to do Tuesday through Saturday to start. Okay. Um, b just because of the logistics of, you know, running two places, um, I didn't I didn't want to go crazy right Completely off the bat. Um, so and that gets you back to Salt and Sleep for dinner at 7 o'clock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's going to be nonstop for a while. All right. So I've covered a lot for him. I've covered up things that he's been doing soon, including his own things that he'll be carrying. Also talking about the hours and location, I know this a lot of the questions are out there and I did get the kosher question answered for you is that the style that he's doing is perfect. So it's, it's something you're going to want to explore and check out. One last thing, because this is something I probably got three or four questions on, was about will it phase in or how will you start out? Will you be able to do catering? Is there any kind of delivery? Because this style of ordering is a real, I mean, even exactly. during the day is a comfort thing yep. for businesses and people alike. Exactly. So. We'll be utilizing um, uh, up, sir, uh, I'm sorry. Uber? Oop, no. Uh, oh my God, we're both going to mess up with this. <laughs> um, Grubhub. Delivery. We'll Grubhub. be using Grubhub okay. to start. We use Grubhub at, at the Slate for lunch right now, so we will be using Grubhub uh, to start. Um, and we'll be, we will be able to do office-style stuff, platters. We, have, we are platter-ready. Um, we have the packaging for that kind of stuff. As far as larger catering events, I do not have a catering license for okay. either restaurant to cater off-premises, like full catering stuff. Um, but we we can but pick do up a delivery exactly. is something that they'll be delivery able to do. Delivery and pick up is is totally. So good. I've noticed that you've already taken some great photos and you're getting stuff out there on social media. Will these menus and how you rotate them will they stay consistently on the website for people to be able to view? Yes. So there's 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 going to be a foundation of stuff. You know. Pastrami is going to be on there. Corned right. beef tongue is going to be on there. Chopped liver is going to be on there. Um, certain things will change, mm -hmm. and those things will be like any other. You know, we, we seasonal items and we, yeah, things as, as, yeah, yeah. As salad ideas change, come in. We we will always have a soup of the day. Um, we'll have matzo ball, and we will have uh, our turkey chili on all the time. Oof, awesome. And then uh, we'll have a daily soup. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I'm extremely excited for you. He's going to build on the success that he already has at Salted Slate. This is going to be something you're going to want to check out. I'll make sure I keep in touch with my friends so that next week we get that announcement out there so you can go over there and see it. But thanks for making the time. Thank I know you're really going Definitely. crazy, and I greatly appreciate it. So I'll be chowing down on a lot of food today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. Taylor, you got a lot to take out here, although I'm stealing the wine on him. <laughs>
You weren't surprised about that, though. Ben. No, no, not at all. <laughs> all right. My God, this is making me drool. Tell, we're going to have a lot of food here. Yeah, that's good. Oh, it's okay. Go ahead with that. I'll get this, too. All right. All right. Joe, thank you, bud. All right. That was a lot of food. I'm very excited to see his opening. It's no small undertaking to open up a new space, especially when you've got one space that you're already paying enough attention to. So make sure you check out Chef Ben. We'll put all the information up on there as soon as he tells me Mercer's is gonna open. And my God, the things you just saw, you're gonna have some amazing things to choose from. My next guest that I'm very happy to bring in is a good friend of mine who does a lot in the community and we're gonna to touch upon that. But I want to bring in Bajat. How are you, sir? Right. Good How to see you. you. Thanks How for being you, here, friend? bud. How are you doing? So I, I, Bajat and I actually text each other, call each other. So we go back and forth on a lot of great yeah. community things. And we got a delivery. That's right. Nice. Perfect Check timing. Look so look at these jackets. So I got to say, I saw this jacket on the news over the weekend that yes. you're doing deliveries over the weekend. Yes. So yes. thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks, Andrew. All right. We got all oh, more stuff. All right. Is that the actual delivery bag? Yes. So let me, let me do that here do real this. quickly, Rick. All right, so like this is your typical delivery, all right? It arrives with your favorite food. It arrives with your favorite drink, all right? Love that. And uh, as you can see, so I got a, I'd love to talk more about delivery. Absolutely. And show you so, all the fun stuff we're doing. So this is, and I, and I want to touch upon this, and people comment all the time where I, my check-ins are on my social media, is that I usually end up at Panera on Fridays. Yes. <laughs> so it's my Friday morning stop over in Lincoln to go to that location. Yes. But We run to each other. Uh, we have a lot. Yes. <laughs> Last weekend you were coming out and greeting yes. the line while I was yes. there. So I want to touch upon this service because this has become a big deal in the restaurant industry yes. with a lot of others creating their business models, truthfully, like Grubhub and you know, right. Uber Eats and stuff now doing this. Right. But you've taken this component and kept it in-house. Yes. So how many Paneras do you have right now? Well, we have a 28 cafes. Okay. We've been in business 18 years, so it's very, very exciting. And we are just for the first time kicking off delivery, as you know. Right. We have um, our number 16 cafe gone live in delivery yesterday. Wow. Number 16, so that was Dartmouth uh, Mass, the last one. But we rolled out Rhode Island and Southeastern Mass the last three weeks or so. Okay. And obviously the Lincoln Cafe, Providence Cafe, and a bunch of cafes around here. And uh, we're just kicking it off. So, I mean, it's no big, it's no, I shouldn't say, it's no small thing to have that many it cafes that go in. And cast. you've got Rhode Island, Mass, and Connecticut. And Connecticut. So we go from Hartford all the way east to all of Rhode Island and southeastern Massachusetts. So, 28 cafes. I, I want to, we're absolutely going to get into what this involves and what's there, but to create this environment is no small feat in and of itself to do that. I mean, these yes. companies that were creating it, to service other people, we're doing it to take the liabilities and stuff off. Yes. You've had to add some job creation here. Yes. So we, we are about 1,200 employee company. Okay. And we've added 100 drivers last year, and we added another 100 drivers this year for just to roll out Rhode Island Southeastern Mass. So in Rhode Island alone, we added 70 uh, new jobs. So we added 100 new jobs just east of Hartford, really. And, um, and by the way, you know, people don't know that. This is all of our employees. So they're physically right? on they're, Panera's they're payroll. And our payroll, and our Panera payroll. They're our drivers. They go through training. They go through orientation. They learn all the aspects of delivery. And so it's a really a cool, cool, fun thing. And, and that to me, I just got to say, I mean, and I'm going to touch upon Bajat's community activities in the end because I really want to acknowledge him for it. But that is no small thing to not just add a new service to it, but to make that investment to bring yes. these people onto your yes. team. And God knows we love getting more jobs in Rhode Island. So yes. congratulations to you and Tom yeah. and the whole group because Thank you. I, I think the service is fantastic we're going to get into, yes. but also the fact that you've added those employees is great. And now you've got people that got to service more of this delivery in the, in the cafes. Yeah, so let me explain a little bit. So what's happening is, you know, a couple years ago we rolled out the app. All oh. right. I don't have my phone on me, but it's a Panera Bread app. Okay. And it now allows you to deliver to order delivery directly from your app. Okay. So you can order the rapid pickup where you come into the cafe and pick it up. Right. You can order delivery if you are within the zone of delivery of the cafe, which is in general, it's about eight minute drive from our cafe because we want to try to have your order delivered in less than thirty minutes to your okay. to your house or to your business or your office or what have you. And so. Um, the app is very convenient. You, you, you store your credit card, you store your loyalty card, you, you place the order, less than 30 minutes, your order is your desk. And we mentioned in the beginning how many cafes there are, so yes. I, it's being within eight minutes of any one of these cafes, yes. you're all over the place. So. They're all over the place, yeah. yeah. So like, like our Providence Cafe will deliver to your office right here, all right? So it's, um, uh, the cool thing about Providence, all right, so I'm a Rhode so Island. Everything's kind of. Uh, is they, they use a bike or walking. 
Really? Yes. So because as we know, it will be difficult to find a parking. So it's a walking distance or a bike distance. Um, it's a really cool, and I just witnessed that a couple days it's ago. It's so funny because I cool. saw the picture of the bike, and I didn't. I'm not yeah. putting two together, but yeah. that's awesome. So they're biking yes. or walking? It. Yes, that's awesome. The, and depending I, on the distance, uh, they bike in it or walk in it. And there was a great picture that made it out onto social media over the weekend. Yes. Of that snow that we had over the yes. weekend, the weird rain snow. Yes. And one of your guys in the orange jacket was, was walking, walking down the street, right. and delivering a food to somebody. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I have to say that I know that this is already getting used, and people are paying attention to yes. it because my wife, who is a preschool teacher has already had it delivered to her and oh, her really? coworkers yes. a couple times already. So yes. I know it's fantastic. So tell us about what can be ordered. Well, so let me, uh, you can order anything to be delivered to you between 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. Anything right? on the menu? Anything on the menu, got to be $5 or more. Okay. All right, so any, you know, for us to make it work, got to be $5 or more. There's a $3 fee. Okay. Uh, well, folks can order multiple orders for multiple folks within their office or within home. You right. can order four sandwiches, 10 sandwiches, three sandwiches, or salads, or soup, or and a latte and, and what have you. So it'll all be delivered in that cool bag yep. that keeps your food cool or keeps it warm, all right? So and your typical order will come in just like it is right here, all right? In the bag, you can see your own, you know, salad to go. Nice. And, you, and you'll get your... Good chicken uh, on that one. It's, um, so this is a strawberry poppy seed salad with chicken, and this is the, uh, we're kicking off the summer corn chowder, all right? You'll have your utensils oh, and everything. Yeah ready to go in your bag and obviously a cool frozen drink oh my god um, i can smell the yes lemon. <laughs> so this is a new also agave and we'll talk about it but this is an agave uh, lemonade okay. drink that uh, obviously one more thing to know that all of our food is all natural yep. there's no coloring there's no preservatives so you're getting exactly all natural food for yourself to, to enjoy like um let me point out you know just we're, we're looking at all these wonderful colors all right yeah. So this is a strawberry poppy seed salad. We just kicked it off last week. It's for the spring and summer. We'll be here all summer long, Perfect. right? This is fresh blueberries, fresh, fresh pineapples, right? It has um, um, strawberries, right? It has roasted pecans, has all natural chicken, okay. all natural romaine. So these, uh, we were really very, very proud of this. And this is a very popular salad right. for, for, the, uh, for the summer and it stays here all summer. So when you say all items on the menu, as these things, and you got this in the box of here, so yeah. as these new seasonal items come up, people can order them. Or oh, exactly. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And all, you know, the cool thing about the app, the app allows you to know what's on the menu, what's seasonal, what's new, and you pick whatever you want to. You want a bagel in the afternoon to yeah. come along with your sandwich? Absolutely. So now I got a question for you from a personal standpoint. So I belong to your Panera Rewards yep. that I use when I come in on my Friday trips. Yes. Does that apply to doing the delivery as well? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's and awesome. one more cool thing about it you can save your favorite order, nice. all right? So if you have, if you love the strawberry poppy seed salad, but you want some cheese on it, for example, right. you save it, it's in your favorite, and you, we will deliver your favorite order. And you mentioned this is a soup that's gonna be now for the season too? Yes, so this okay. is for the summer. It's a summer corn chowder, all right? It's, uh, oh, again, no colors, no preservatives. It's a great soup for the summer, it's corn. You know, it's, it's one, one of my those, favorite. And I'm one of those people that like soup in the summer. And I'm pulling yes. this out before he gets to the agave. Oh, this because, is dangerous. Because this is going to be, and Evan, I know my son is watching right now. Yes, I will be bringing these <laughs> yeah. home, I promise. <laughs> so this is, um, as you know, we bake everything in our cafes. In yep. every single cafe across the country, Panera, we bake through our artisan bakers all night long in every single cafe. So they bake these and they hand ice them and craft them every single night for the, for the following morning. It is uh, so, these so were tempting when you go into a Panera, yes. that case right in front yeah, of you. Yeah, well, that's why it smells so cool and so yeah. great in and, uh, and a Panera, because all these are baked all day long, all night long, and they're iced, and we serve them for the, for the spring. So I have to add in there is that I always get asked, well, do I want one of these things when I come in? And I yeah. always have to find a way to say yes, because I figure I can bring it home to someone. Because yeah. I'm for every Friday, my go-to thing is my, my Asiago bagel. Yes. I'm addicted to Panera's <laughs> Asiago bagels. So I love well, it's them. That's a great bagel. It is. And, you know, and, and so back, you know, back to the delivery, we are very proud to have you know, onboarded so many drivers the last few weeks. And they're doing a phenomenal job. And our managers that run our cafes, you know, now they have a whole new business that they're managing. Right. And, uh, it's, you know, it's an added job, added sales, added uh, customers. And, and, and one more thing, too, to add, that our customer has been really asking for this for a very, very long time. And, um, and they want to try to enjoy Panera, but a lot of times you can't leave your office. Right. And this is where it becomes very convenient. And really, it's taken off very, very quickly, where people are finding convenience for their order. That's to what I was just going to say. The convenience factor exactly. is huge for that. Yeah. Now, you mentioned before about the training of the drivers, and this is a lot of people to bring on yes. in, a, in, a, in a short amount of time. 
training is important and these delivery services people want to know that they can trust them and that That's they feel right. comfortable with the people That's taking right. this stuff over I mean the gentleman that you just had brought in is obviously looking like it's something he's enjoying and proud yes. of to be out there so is that something that you're screening them you're taking them out yes. at the beginning and going yes. through that yes we uh, as you've noticed we we advertise a lot yeah and all job posts possible on social media. We interview a lot of people and we hired seven to 11 or so drivers per cafe okay. and they go through a background check. You gotta make sure their, their driving record is clean, your background check is clean, to making sure it is safe to send them on the road as well to deliver to somebody's office or home. We're very, very proud. You know, the, our drivers are very, very proud of the service they're able to provide. And you know, we have something we call a Panera, Panera Hugs, yep. all right? And it's cool when, when somebody in their office and they're hungry and the bag shows up <laughs> and they're so excited. And we call that a really a Panera hug. That's and it's fantastic. really cool to see that. All right, so we got to get to this. Yes. What? So, so agave is just, this is a lemonade agave blended over ice. There's no other ingredient, right? So it's a, it's a very refreshing summer drink. It's very, very popular. It smells unbelievable. Yes, it smells very, very good. <laughs> And, and don't forget, you know, Friday is going to be 66 degrees. Hopefully it's going to be 70 degrees on That's Saturday. Sad, hopefully. So this, this fits in in the, uh, in the weather very nicely. So we covered a lot about Panera and the delivery service important, especially beyond the fact of convenience, but that you're increasing jobs and helping Rhode yeah. Islanders get new employment in the state. So congratulations to you and the thank entire you. team. We really thank appreciate you. it. Before I let him go, I have to congratulate him and thank Bajaf for the many things that he does in the community. So just a week or so ago, I was with you in the Rhode Island Convention Center for yes. a junior achievement event. Yes. JA Leaders Day is coming up, which is tomorrow. I'm teaching a kindergarten yes. class yes. for five hours. You've won an award from Junior Achievement. Yes. You're part of the Rhode Thank Island you. Hospitality <laughs> Association. Yes. Yes. You've been involved with the Convention Visitors Bureau. So you guys really have a firm community commitment. And I yes. just saw that you launched a new thing, a, a new fundraising group that you're doing well, right now, right? We, we, well, we've been associated with Children's Friend, okay. as you know, since day one for 18 years. Yep. And the, um, in early May, we will kick off the Walk for Children's Friend. Um, that will happen in Roger Williams, and uh, it's a Panera thing. All okay. our associate, all our managers participate, my family participate. Awesome. And you know, really to make a comment, you know, I live in Rhode Island. Um, my kids all grew up in Rhode Island, all went to school in Rhode Island. You know, this is our state. It's, awesome. it's our responsibility to give back, our responsibility to support the communities that we're very, very fortunate to do business in. So how can people support you on this particular one? Well, go to our Facebook page, okay. which is Panera Bread HBG or Howley Bread dot com and uh, they can definitely learn a lot about it and you can also go on children's friend website you can see that we're supporting it we'll be selling bracelets for a dollar all the money goes directly to children's friend programs and services um, and they can and get the bracelets right difference. in the cafes right in every rhode island southeastern massachusetts cafe yes indeed perfect yes. i wanted to highlight that because while this new delivery service is fantastic it's important to have these partners that stay involved in the community and creating yeah, jobs absolutely. and being involved from absolutely. the charitable perspective is fantastic yeah. and rick thank you for what you do as well thank every, you every time i go to an event you're there <laughs> so, i am I'm, I'm never sleeping that's for sure I appreciate <laughs> thank it thank you for making it thank today. you really thank really you. appreciate thank you for the opportunity. it and all yes right. guys i will bring these home to you yes all right thank god take thank care have a good afternoon you too thank you my friend Taylor, slide this out. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Don't forget that. All right. Now, Bajat, like I said, I see him out all the time. His group has done a wonderful job. The delivery service, I can tell you, from just being used in my family already is a great thing. I don't want to not highlight enough the jobs that they've created because that's important to not only the state as a whole, but the restaurant community and knowing that there's good jobs out there that you can get with a good company like them and their charitable efforts. So congratulations to the whole Holly Bread Group and to Bajat for all the work he does. Uh, my next guest is Chef Andy, and I want to bring in Chef Andy to talk about Zako Taco because I just got two more messages saying, when's he coming on? And here he comes. Oh, and Jeff's oh, bringing in me a yeah. drink. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Good to, good to see you. Thank you. All right. The tattoos for the kids. Oh my God, you were too funny. Yeah. You were too funny. <laughs> for everybody. All right, thanks, All right. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff's been on before. I got to get the chef in. How you doing, chef? How are you? Good. Nice thanks to meet for you. Thanks for making it in. You too. Yeah. Taylor's got some things right behind you. All, All right. right. Yep. Some more dishes. Come on in with them. All right, the kids will love this. Quite popular with the young kids. Oh, those tattoos. Yeah. Look at this. Awesome. All right. My God, these chips are like the that. aroma just from the chips. All, All right. right. So first thing I got to get into is that you guys made this transition really quickly. Yep. Into nice getting over there. And the concept has been, I mean, it's been what, not even two months? It's yet? almost three months. Almost three months. Okay. Three months in about a week. So. so the reviews already, and I got a lot of great messages and feedback of people saying they've been over there for lunch. They love the setup. 
before I get to this amazing food, give us kind of a walkthrough of what the space transformed into, if you don't mind. Okay, so um, the new Zaco Taco, it's, it's almost like walking into a, a Mexican street carnival. It's a lot of fun. You walk in, there's graffiti. There is a 1970 restored uh, Volkswagen bus that's been transformed into a taco truck, which we serve tacos out of um, late night. Um, there are a lot of found objects, antiques. There's an old sauerkraut press that's been turned into a table. There's a tractor that's been turned into a table. Um, a lot of antiques, kind of vintage. There's an old foosball machine in the dining room. That's awesome. Um, we have two classic ski ball machines coming in in about a month. So it's just, it's just a lot of fun. Between the, the food, the drinks, and the atmosphere, you can't beat it. No, and, it's, and that's what people are saying. I mean, I, I've only made it as far as the bar, and Jeff wasn't there that night. Otherwise, I probably would have been stuck there a lot longer. <laughs> but I made it as far as the bar, and this is what I was drinking. So this yeah. is great to see. But Deja it's, vu. It's, it's completely, you did, you did a transformation. And everything you Complete just mentioned. Complete transformation. It, they it, knocked out, I don't know if you remember the old Rick's Roadhouse, but... You walk in, there was a big wall yep. behind the bar. That has been completely removed, so it's an open space. Um, with the good weather coming in, we have a, we're have we getting ready to put the patio Patio's out. going to go back in action, right? That's a big uh, question this, I got. This weekend. Okay, so, that's awesome. So for that, if we get to that 70 degrees on Saturday, yeah. now you know the patio is going to be in great shape. So this inspiration, and you talk about kind of like the street carnival effect of being yep. there. Where are you drawing your inspiration from from the menu? Because we're going to talk about these great things you brought, but just from the feedback and what I've seen so far, you've got a great variety. I mean, bigger than what you would expect. Yeah, a great variety. And a lot of the inspiration just came, um, I moved out here three years ago from San Francisco. Um, I've lived half my life in Southern California, between Southern California, San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Um, and I've done a lot of traveling in Mexico. I've always just been drawn to the, nice. the flavors of Mexico. Um, so what we're trying to do is take some of the local ingredients that New England has to offer yep. and you know, using traditional Mexican techniques, um, all the way from our tortillas, which we make our masa every day. Um, we have an old uh, machine that was brought from Mexico that rolls out our masa. We cook really? the tortillas to order um, using uh, non-GMO organic masa. Wait, you cook the tortillas to order? To order, yep. So we have, uh, we have uh, I'm gonna even drop, drop her name, Sarah. She's, we call her La Machina, which means the machine. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> And she just gets there at 11 o'clock. We open at 11.30, and she just starts making tortillas. And after the lunch rush, she, she does a little bit of prep. And then going into dinner, we, we do it all over again. Well, so. well done, Sarah, because you're getting great reviews. That's fantastic. All right. So let's talk about, and I think your inspiration, and I didn't know that you were by background, so I'm very happy to hear that and let uh -huh. people know that. So let's talk about what you brought today and some of the things that you do have on the menu. So Okay. Um, so let's start. I guess you we'll just start me. with so like what you would as an appetizer. So... Uh, we have our house-made chips um, and our smoked salsa verde. So we still have the old smoker at Rick's. So we try to incorporate some of those flavors, awesome. um, kind of intensify those with using the smoker. So this is a combination of fresh tomatillos, um, charred onions, charred garlic, and serrano chilies. Wow. Um, I'll go take a, take a trip through the smoker, um, pureed, and it's delicious. Then we have the guacamole, which we make fresh between two and three times a day, depending on how busy we are. We just make small batches. Oh, God. Um, and so this is probably what you would start with. Um, just for the record, this goes perfectly with this. Just for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, another one, going back to the using, um, trying to source as local as possible, we use uh, some bombster scallops from Connecticut. Yep. And this is our uh, bombster scallop uh, agua chile, which is very similar to a ceviche. Okay. Um, but this one has cucumber, uh, jalapeno, uh, red onion, and a lot of lime juice, salt. Keeping it simple, just kind of wanting those, the simplicity of the freshness of the scallops to kind of play the lead role here. So is the ceviche, in a ceviche, correct me if I'm wrong, Chef, is it that the, the fish is kind of marinating itself in there? Is that the same for this too? It, exactly. Okay. So to order, this is actually, so as you eat it, when you first get it, it's made to order, first right. of all. So we squeeze fresh lime juice over it, um, add a little bit of salt, and then we add our agua chile mix, which is what I um, talked about, the cucumber, yep. the lime, all yep. that. Um, and then it just gets tossed. So when you first get it on your table, we serve it with uh, blue tortilla chips, okay. actually, this one, which we didn't bring. That's okay. Um, and 
as you when you first get it, the scallops are still raw, but as you eat right. it, they they start to kind of cook and the texture right. changes. Okay. So you almost get two dishes in one. That's what I was just saying. Okay, because when I've had a good ceviche, in my opinion, uh -huh. is that same thing. Is that you're getting the flavor, so you know what it was when it got there, and you're feeling it as it finishes up to you. Exactly. So that's going to be the same thing happening here. Yep. Fantastic. Um, so that's a great popular uh, appetizer that we have, and you know, moving into the summer, we're getting ready to do a menu flip. So. We'll be switching out to using uh, Stone Eaton Red Shrimp, which are nice. also from Connecticut and doing more of like a Mexican style seafood cocktail. Perfect. Um, some other fun things that we have, which your, your eyes were drawn to, are the, are the chapulines, which are actually crickets. Crickets. Which you can add to your any taco, guacamole, and it just adds a chili, lime, kind of a crispy, I almost say it tastes like a little bit of like a fried onion. Really? Um, and we source these from, we actually source these from Mexico from uh, Oaxaca, which is a region in southern, or a city in southern Mexico. Um, so that the are very popular. Is true. There is crickets. There, there you go. is There's crickets. like three people. They really have crickets on the menu. And they were, I got to hold this up again because that's yep. awesome. But you're saying it, so it's got a, more of a spicier flavor to them. It's got a little bit of spice, a little lime, a little salt, and it just adds a really nice kind of crispy texture to whether it's guacamole, tacos, um, and it's fun for people late night at the bar. I've seen many people, hey, I'll buy you a drink if you eat some crickets. Uh, so, I, that would be me. <laughs> yeah. All right, what um, do we got here? So this is our cochinita pibil, which is a uh, pork shoulder that we marinate in our uh, adobo, which is basically just a blend of spices, um, achiote paste, which is a really bright, brightly colored um, paste that has some cumin, oregano, some other spices. And we basically wrap that in banana leaves and slow cook that for about four to five hours. Um, so you get the flavor of the banana leaf and it just kind of steams, traps everything in there. Um, we top this with our house made habanero carrot salsa, our pickled red onion, and a little bit of cilantro and uh, chopped white onion. Oh my God. So this is also one of our $2 tacos, which are available from three to five, as well as late night. So I'm being, Sherry, okay, I'm getting your message here. Smoked cauliflower and wild mushroom tacos. Yes, so we also offer a, a really uh, nice vegan and vegetarian um, there you go. menu, which I think we have three right now. We have a chili relleno uh, taco, we have the smoked cauliflower, and then we have the wild mushroom. The smoked cauliflower... I'd have to try that one, because I like that one too, now that Sherry's saying the smoked yeah. cauliflower. It sounds good. Yeah, Sherry, I'm going to make you put some crickets on yours. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, and then back to kind of, we're in New England, we like oysters. This is our crispy oyster taco. Um, so these are dusted in the masa that we use to make our tortillas, flash fried, topped with some spicy pickled carrots, our smoked salsa verde, and cilantro onion. So is the menu style, so when they're coming out, is it no, how many would be in an order like this? You can order, so we do a platter, which you get two, um, two tacos, and it comes with a side of rice and beans. Okay. Or all of our tacos are available a la carte. So well. you can kind of mix it up if you, you want to. You mix it up. Perfect. Yep. Um, and last, to finish your meal, we have, this is one of our desserts, we have, uh, Two desserts right now. We have uh, the churro donuts um, served with a bittersweet Mexican chocolate sauce. Yep. And then this is our pineapple coconut trace leche cake, which is uh, we make a fresh uh, butter cake, a little bit of vanilla. Uh, we poke some holes in it, and then we pour a mixture of condensed milk, coconut milk, and regular milk over it. Let that soak overnight so that the cake actually wow. has kind of a moist flavor to it. And then we whip, you know, the solidified coconut milk that you find in a can? Yeah. We whip that up with a little bit of vanilla powdered sugar, and that becomes the whipped cream. So it's whipped coconut cream, and then some uh, toasted coconut to finish it off. Oh my God, this is like unbelievable. And there's pine fresh pineapple in there as well. So. Oh. Now, let's talk about this drink. So this is the uh, mango margarita. So what makes all of our margaritas special, in my opinion, is we juice the limes fresh daily. It's lime juice, agave, and this, is, this has mango puree. Um, our classic is just the agave, the lime. So they got a little bit of tartness to it, not a lot of sugar, right. you know? So I don't know if you've ever had a margarita fresh, that's- incredibly fresh. Yeah, it just really speaks to you. Um, you guys, this menu is unbelievable. So, I, I mean, this transition that you guys have made, congratulations to you. And I know you. Jeff has been working hard on it with the whole group over there. Coming up, you got Cinco de Mayo, which is now gonna be a holiday for you guys Cinco over there. Cinco de Mayo um, is coming up, yeah. Um, and we actually have a countdown on our website that's just counting it down. Oh, so, I saw that, okay. All so right. we're definitely promoting that. I think hopefully the weather's nice. Um, patio will be open. We have a few surprises. Um, not gonna share too All much right, about okay. that, but- But you'll have is, some interesting stuff going on for the day. It is soft shell crab season. Okay. So there may be a soft shell crab torta. Um, 
And then also the red shrimp are going to be in town, so we'll have, we'll have some different, uh, different tacos. The menu will most likely be, some of those items will be flipped by then. Awesome. So we'll have a, you know, some so new things. So maybe I'll have to go over there this year and do a Facebook Live. I'll have to get Jeff to save me a seat at the bar. <laughs> and we'll do a Facebook Live. Like last year, I went to, uh, what I, oh, I went to Don Jose's on the Hill for Cinco de Mayo. So this year, I'm going to have to come over to you guys okay. and check it out. Yeah. Well, Chef, thank you for coming and explaining this. Really exciting to see. I mean, three months old and getting this many reviews is unbelievable. So now, large groups and stuff like that, you guys can still take larger parties? Yes, large parties. We actually have a party tonight. Um, what used to be the game room at Rick's has been turned into an event space, so awesome. you can book parties in there. Tonight we have uh, Al Pastor marinated pork on a vertical rotisserie that we're shaving off for the guests to order. That's awesome. Um, made to order guacamole, I mean, just all sorts of stuff. So Perfect. it's Perfect. book your party. Well, thank you again for making it in today. Thank really, you so really much, Really, really appreciate Rick. it. All right. I'll be tasting a few of these things when I come right out. Okay. So got to head out and close up because we got Kate Nagel coming up next with everything that's going on in news and politics. I heard there's some exciting things that are happening up on uh, Capitol Hill. So she'll be coming in next. Thank you for joining me. I'm Rick Simone. I'll see you next week on The Taste.